In this video we will discuss retrolental fibrodysplasia. In this video we will discuss retrolental fibrodysplasia or retinopathy of prematurity, its causes and the etiology and pathology. Retrolental fibrodysplasia is the most common cause of blindness in children. So what happens in retrolental fibrodysplasia? There is fibrovascular proliferation, abnormal growth of blood vessels associated with growth of fibrous tissue scar tissue leading to retinal detachment. The condition occurs in premature infants. In premature infants treated with high oxygen concentration for long periods, oxygen causes interruption of normal progression of newly developing retinal vessels. There is overgrowth and invasion of the developing retinal vessels into the vitreous. There is abnormal proliferation of fibrous tissue immediately behind the lens of the eye. Disturbance in retinal vascularization is usually bilateral but often asymmetric also. How high oxygen concentration causes interruption of normal developing retinal vessels. Hyperoxygenation, oxygen concentration of 60 to 80 percent or more causes constriction in the retinal vessels. So there is initial vascular obliteration in the growing vessels in the developing retina. So oxygen causing constriction in the retinal vessel and vascular obliteration. What factor affects this constriction caused by hyperoxygenation? Effect is directly proportional to oxygen concentration duration of oxygen exposure and a degree of immaturity of the retinal blood vessel. Number two, when the infant is removed from high oxygen concentration to normal room air, it causes vascular proliferation. Why? Vascular proliferation due to relative anoxia. So what anoxia causes? Anoxia causes dilatation and tortuosity of the retinal blood vessels in the periphery of the fundus. Number two, peripheral retinal edema followed by development of abnormal vessels in the retina which invade, which invade the internal limiting membrane and vitreous leading to retinal detachment. Hemorrhage new vascularization, transudation in the fundal periphery and retinal separation contribute to the formation of characteristic retrolental membrane. So what are the ophthalmoscopic findings in the retrolental fibrodysplasia? Complete retinal detachment covered by a dense white retrolental membrane which obscure the red reflex of the fundus. The initial changes of retrolental fibroplasia are usually noticed during the first month after birth. So what factors contribute to retrolental fibrodysplasia? Inhalation of high oxygen concentration for long period in premature infants especially those who have low birth weight of less than 3 pounds causes retrolental fibrodysplasia. Also deficiency of corticotrophin and vitamin E may lead to the condition.